Let me open with something easy. Yeah. How would you describe the performance of IMI this year, the so-called uh, crown jewel of the <laughs> AC industrial I'm portfolio? I'm not so sure about the crown jewel, but I think what we just, uh, we, we were not surprised, primarily because for the, for the few years, we've been espousing already that the company has actually been undervalued amongst its peers. The only uh, difference is that we were actually listed here in the Philippines, which has very little uh, coverage in terms of this particular industry as compared to a global, a global reach. So what has happened is now finally the rest of the world and, and the local economy has finally figured out the, the disruption that we've been uh, playing very heavily in for the last few years is coming forth and now we're given the proper valuation that the company should be. Well, actually, your shareholders agree that you've had a good year because year to date, uh, the stock has returned a little over 190% yes. to the shareholders. Uh, what you're saying is from a purely valuations perspective, you think this is not yet at fair value? You think you're still a little undervalued at this stage? Well, we're now comparable with our peers on a global basis that actually operate in this particular space. Uh, what I'm saying is that uh, we have not stopped. We still have a lot more in our strategy to, uh, to implement, and you've seen some of those that have already started this year. So we continue to do that, and we're going to try to fuel that. As you know, we've already announced the, the stock rights offering that we're going to do to raise some capital in order to continue with this strategy. What's a good price for you sitting at 1764 right now? What's, <laughs> what's going to make you sit back and say, ah, well, I've done my job. Uh, <laughs> this well, has been a fantastic year. We'll have to ask the chairman there. <laughs> we'll leave that down <laughs> for now. Jazza to figure out what's the best price. Let's take a step back and look <laughs> at the last 18 months that AC Industrials and IMA has had. And it's been incredibly busy. Yeah. Um, I want to just recap a few things. In late 2016, you bought out majority uh, stake in Germany's V Optronics. That's an optical bonding and display solutions provider. Right. And then in April, you closed the deal to buy 80% of STI Electronics, which is based in the UK. Uh, electronics design and manufacturing firm as well. And then, of course, you also bought out a majority in MT Misselbeck, which is a uh, auto, German auto su parts supplier as well as aero defense supplier. And then, of course, you've got an existing partnership with Austria's KTM Motors. Right. Uh, the, the obvious question to me here is what is the vision here? What's the end goal? What are you working towards? Well, the vision is primarily twofold one, one on a more uh, uh, on the nation building side. And then the other one is more on the global side. So I'll, I'll, I'll look at it from a global side. From a global side, as we know, the disruption that's happening in the automotive and the mobility space is going to continue. There's two prongs that we actually look at. One is in that space. The other one is in the industrial space, which is more on the security side. And this is the reason why we've made this particular uh, acquisitions on a global basis. The more na na nation building side is that we see manufacturing as a core for any economy or any growing economy that would want to leapfrog beyond where, what an emerging market would be, right? And so we see that we have to actually drive that on our own rather than wait for the opportunities to come. And this is the reason why we started acquiring all of these different entities globally that has the core competence necessary if we were to go ahead and develop our own automotive industry here in the Philippines and not wait for somebody to come and do it for us. Do you mean to say these aren't building blocks uh, towards uh, developing a first Ayala-branded self-driving electric vehicle, <laughs> perhaps? Well, I'm, I'm not saying that it's out of uh, the, the realm of possibilities. But what we're saying is that in the future, where the Philippines will continue its, uh, its growth path, and we became a significant player here in the Asian market, as, fo as far as the automotive uh, industry will become, we will need certain core capabilities in order to be able to participate in that area within the country. And that's what uh, the group uh, headed by our chairman and, and Ayala Corp through AC Industrials have been uh, trying to put together for so us. So you're preparing for that future. And it really sounds right. like you're trying to uh, strengthen your foothold in uh, so-called high value markets, particularly in right. automobile and aero defense. How busy do you think you'll be in 2018 as far as acquisitions are concerned? How much more do you, are you looking to spend? Well, we're looking at several other parts to, to go complement this. Um, and on top of that, also expand organically the different assets that we have because the pipeline that we have currently is pretty good. Uh, if you, ha you have to understand, the industry and the market that we're in is not a cyclical market. 
So we have gestation projects, we have a long-term product life cycle, and so we have visibility of all of these pipelines coming forth. And so we're really uh, gearing up for that. Give me a better sense of where, what's looking attractive to you at the moment, where in the world you're looking at. Oh, we're in the world, <laughs> we're looking at where we have. Where geographically we, act, we have active, uh, active uh, deals ongoing that we're, we're looking at uh, very aggressively in the United States, in, in Asia, in Japan, in, uh, in, uh, in Europe as well. And, uh, and so we're, 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 we're looking all over. Uh, we don't know. Of course, the Philippines continues to be an important part of our, of, of our portfolio, but uh, more, more globally. So the shopping spree isn't coming to an end in 2018? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> One exciting thing that's coming up for you very uh, in the near term is the partnership with KTM Motors. You were uh, yes. scheduled to start exporting bikes, ATM, KTM rather, bikes to Thailand. Is that on track? That is on track. We're, we're scheduled to do that here before the end of the year. We got all the necessary documentation and, uh, and requirements done. And uh, we're looking forward to the next tranche would be uh, first quarter of next year where we start uh, exporting the bikes now to China. And uh, how big a shipment are we talking about here? Well, the first shipments are still very relatively small. Uh, we measure it in terms of container, container sizes. And so then, uh, but the projected target that we have that eventually we're gonna export about 10,000 bikes total. Uh, for, the, for a given annual production run. This is to China or to Thailand? To both, and we're trying to balance 10, those 10,000 combined? Combined, okay. yes. Um, a key to your overseas uh, footprint is the plant that you're building in Serbia. Last I heard, it was scheduled to open in 2018. Can you give us an update on that? That's ongoing. We, we actually have uh, the first, we cut it into three phases. First phase is about 12,000 square meters, and that's on track to open around the first quarter of 2018. So. If you ever are going to be around Serbia, we'd be more than happy to. Uh, oh yeah, you know, I can totally picture over. myself going to Serbia in this first quarter. Yeah. <laughs> then the second phase is around uh, another 8,000, and then another 4,000 thereafter. Total, we actually acquired about a five-hectare piece of property in Serbia in order to uh, address that growing need in the European market, especially the Eastern European side. And it's in a city called Nice as well. Mm. Not exactly right. a major commercial capital of Europe. Can you? Talk to a little bit about the value of building such a plant in Serbia, in Nice of all places. Yes. So we went through a very, very tedious process of identifying. We went through 80 cities around Eastern Europe and we came down with Nice. Nice is actually the second city of Serbia and the more popular one is Belgrade. The first. So Belgrade is the city of the north. The city center in the south of Serbia is Nice. And this is the center of electronics for that country when it was still part of Yugoslavia. So, so this is the history of that country. Now, what's nice about it, it's only two hours away from our Bulgaria factory. And so we have now the natural uh, flow of goods and talent that we can then work on supplying both factories within uh, one management team. And at the same time, it has free trade agreements with the rest of the world, which we don't have with the other sites that we have. So we now have capabilities of shipping to Russia, on a free trade agreement and things like this. I'm guessing uh, cost-wise it was also competitive enough for you. Very competitive. And the government was very, very aggressive in trying to get us in there. <laughs> and what are you, this first phase of the Serbia plant, how much are you looking to churn out uh, out of the gate? Well, the, 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 we currently have a pipeline of customers already waiting to get in. But we're very conservative on, on giving the, the plant time to qualify. As you know, we're setting it up as an automotive factory, so it takes some level of certification and qualification before it goes into startup production. But we anticipate that uh, uh, on a, we're, we would like to get at least 100 million euros out of that factory when it's running at full bore. 100 million euros for 2018? No, 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 no. As, as, a, as a plan. As a, as a whole? As a whole, okay. yes. Um, yeah. just, churning, just exporting uh, automobiles at this stage? Uh, Car parts? Uh, electronic electronic, uh, parts. electronic uh, components that are uh, related to automotive industrial. If you had your way, what other market would you like to break into in 2018? Well, there's... there's I mean, you're already I mean, making plans for the rest of yeah. Europe. Where well, else is interesting? Well, ACI or Ayala, uh, uh, AC Industrials uh, uh, Charter is really, we would like to be part of the enabling technologies that would help our other businesses in the Ayala group, such as energy, telecommunication, and so 
as uh, we're, we're looking at other technologies that we would like to look into in order to provide that as a catalyst for these other businesses. Um, how much more, any indications at this stage, how much more you'd like to spend on partnerships, acquisitions, uh, et cetera, next year? Well, the, the, the rights offering, the 100 million target that we have for our rights offering, uh, part and parcel of that is, used, is, is actually uh, slated for these, uh, for these uh, acquisitions. And do we have more details on this rights issue uh, in terms of offer size, in terms of date, in terms of uh, the, uh, what you're looking to, the issue size essentially, yeah. offer Tar price issue size? Yeah. Target date is first quarter of next year. Uh, of course, the, the, we're, we're, we're anticipating to raise about 100 million out of it. The price will be dependent, again, on the shareholder participation and then how the market is reacting and so on. And most of this money is allocated towards acquisitions, expansion? Uh, no, part of it is to shore up our balance sheet also because we started all these acquisitions and we got into debt, so we're going to try to right-size our debt. Part of it is also to, uh, to, to acquire and then to beef up all the working capital necessary for the expansion of these companies. And outside, did you say first quarter of 2018? You yes. Said for, for the timeline? Yes. And outside of this $100 million uh, rights offer, do you foresee having to tap the capital markets again in 2018? Uh, we'll see. <laughs> I mean, uh, I, I can't say ready right now, but something that uh, we will are constantly looking at is the possibility of all the other opportunities we're looking at. Do you think AC Industrials will ever do an IPO? I mean, considering that IMI is already listed and you've absorbed it and all of that. Well, we, we will never say never, right? I mean, <laughs> what, we're, what we're doing is we're trying to be, create a portfolio that would be conducive. And then if the time comes that it's necessary now to go ahead and tap the equity market in order to grow and not lose the opportunity of the the strategy that we put forth, then I'm sure we will consider it. So let's talk about your financials. Uh, solid numbers through the first nine months of the year. I'm talking about the parent company now, AC Ayala Corporation. And yes. what we'll see from the numbers is that growth is still being driven by the property arm, that's Ayala Land, Correct. as well as the banking arm, that's BPI. Yes. And yet, AC Industrials and IMI also uh, not too shabby there. Numbers fast catching up. Were you happy with these? Oh, of course, of course. I mean, the whole conglomerate, uh, uh, you have to understand that the working group we have at the Yala Corp is uh, very, very congenial. We're very, we work with each other. We, we try to give each other advice and we make sure that uh, everybody looks after everybody's perspective so that we minimize the blind spots uh, along the way. What kind of targets have you set for the whole AC Industrials team for 2018? For 2018, I, I actually would say that at 2020, we have uh, very aggressive targets of doubling. So, doubling what? Yeah, uh, our current current uh, our current uh, net income so you the, the target is for net income at this stage for this stage double yes. uh, where it was this year where, where it is this where year this double year, 2017's yeah. number 20, on to 2022 yeah 2016 uh, 2017's number all the way to 2020 yes yeah, very aggressive <laughs> what yeah. about markets why do you haven't set any such target in terms of geographies that you'd like to break into or uh, customers. We were looking at uh, expanding more into the Asian region, uh, the ASEAN region. That's something that we were looking at. We had a China plus one strategy, so we had China, we had the Philippines. We're looking at maybe going to a China plus two, China plus three strategy for ASEAN. All right, let's talk a little bit about the broader industry. Uh, tax reform being the big news of the year. What kind of impact, as a high-tech manufacturer, what kind of impact do you foresee that the tax reform bill might have on your operations. Uh, one of the more contentious uh, provisions, I should say, is the coal excise taxes, which you know could uh, equate to higher electricity rates. Correct. So those are the two ones. So if I'll, look, I'll talk about it from an IMI perspective, which is more export oriented. So there's two defining ones in there. One is the, the, the VAT exemption that is being taken out of the services for local services, which I think is very uh, non-competitive uh, as far as the other ASEAN and other uh, operations that I have in the rest of the world. Uh, on top of that also is this, uh, the coal tax also. I, I don't mind the, 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 the idea of driving more renewable and energy, but I think it cannot be uh, turning on one faucet and then waiting for the other ones to go. I think it has to be a cohesive policy of making sure that we have enough competitive energy supply uh, that's cost competitive before we start going to uh, going after the ones that we already depend on. Do you envision um, that you have to rework your numbers as a consequence of this? 
uh, we constantly do that. Uh, we, we constantly revisit our budget and uh, depending on the currencies, as you know, the peso moving all over and things like this. And, and of course, I was going to ask you about that. The other big thing that you have to contend with contend with this year's a weaker peso Correct. as we were just reporting earlier in the show no relief in sight for 2018 in yeah. fact most analysts are seeing the local currency weaken even further in next year uh, what kind of impact will that have on your bottom line well from an eye my perspective it's positive because our functional currency is dollars and and then and, and again the the effect of the the revenue from the from IMI's perspective is only 30 percent here in the Philippines and the rest is in other currencies and so we're naturally hedge outside. So the, the impact on a foreign gain is actually positive for IMI. Now, for the other businesses, which is the local consumer businesses for auto, then it becomes a negative one because then we're peso denominated there. And we have a weaker peso, which means we have to use a lot more peso in order to cover all the different uh, costs that we have in operating our automotive businesses. Will you have to shift funds around? Uh, we're uh, we're look we're a very uh, we're a long term uh, investors and we're very we have strategies in place. We don't think that these markets are actually enough for us to revisit our strategies. Uh, it's one of those things, you know. When when the water rises, all the ships rise with it. So <laughs> I'm not uh, yeah, exactly. So as long as it's a level playing field. I think we have enough coffers in our capabilities in our group in order to manage that. Well, you touch on it, the other provision already, auto excise taxes, that was also uh, one yes. that was most contentious. And what we yes. can see from your nine-month earnings report, for specifically for IMI, was that there was lower contributions from Isuzu and Honda Cars Philippines. And then going into next year, with the introduction of new excise taxes, do yeah. you see that uh, you know, hurting your uh, portfolio even more? Um, the, not, not as much because I think the final version is a little bit more tempered than the more aggressive one that we restarted with. And so I'm not banking that there will be an adverse effect to that. I think more, more effect to that would be uh, the level of infrastructure development we do in order to manage this growth that is happening in the country. I think that would be more more determining for us. You touched on renewables uh, briefly. Yeah. Is there yes. any plans at all to venture into the renewables energy space for AT Industrials? We're Which, always is that something you'd yes. consider? Yes, yes. Uh, we're always looking into that space, uh, especially that we know that energy is a core component for our other businesses. And at the same time, we believe in that part of the business, which is technology driven. And we feel that we can have access to a disruptive technology in order to to, uh, to be able to be a contender in that space. What kind of unique value do you think you can bring to the table? There are certain technology barriers that are inherent to the solar, for example, uh, or, or the wind turbine technology. On the wind turbine technology, the basic core component that drives the turbine is power modules. And this is something that IMI already has in its coffer. And this is something that we see a significant growth that's happening in the future. So this, that's the part on the wind, wind side. On the renewable, on the solar side, what we see is that the, 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 the limitations of the weight, uh, the power, the efficiencies, the electronic longevity of all of these systems can be disrupted very well by somebody who understands that space, very, uh, you know, that space especially the electronic <laughs> side. It sounds like you've got big, big plans for 2018. My last yes. question to you is how much in CapEx will you need to fulfill all of these uh, ideas? Well, from an ACI perspective, from an AC industrial perspective, we already allocated about a little less than 10 billion in, in CapEx since uh, 2016 to 2020. And we're, we're already uh, deployed about half of that and we're continuing to uh, go ahead with deploying the other half. And then plus the rights offering for plus first the rights quarter offering next time. That Fan doesn't include the rights offering. Fantastic yeah. insights. Thank yeah. you so much for your time. We appreciate your candid answers. Arthur Tan, Group really President good. and Group CEO and President of Ayala Corporation Industrials. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you very much.